The Indian Act is a Canadian federal law that governs the matters pertaining to Indian status, bands, and Indian reserves. The Indian Act came to be developed over time through separate pieces of colonial legislation regarding Aboriginal peoples across Canada. In 1876, these acts were consolidated as the Indian Act. Systems of control that had been established in prior legislation were now newly defined under one act, the Indian Act of 1867. This act effectively treated Aboriginal people as children. When Aboriginal political organizing became more extensive in the 1920s and groups began to pursue land claims, the federal government added Section 141 to the Indian Act. Section 141 outlawed the hiring of lawyers and legal counsel by Indians, effectively barring Aboriginal peoples from fighting for their rights through the legal system. In 1969, Prime Minister Trudeau proposed a white paper policy with the aim of achieving greater equality for Indians. To do this, he proposed to abolish the Indian Act and dismantle the Department of Indian Affairs. Aboriginals would essentially become like other Canadian citizens, although it was widely rejected by Aboriginal peoples across Canada. Legislation stated that a status Indian woman who married a non-Indian man would cease to be an Indian. She would lose her status, and with it, she would lose treaty benefits, health benefits, the right to live on her reserve, the right to inherit her family property, and even the right to be buried on the same reserve as her ancestors. However, if an Indian man married a non-status woman, he would keep all his rights. Even if an Indian woman married another Indian man, she would cease to be a member of her own band and become a member of his. In 2009, the Supreme Court of British Columbia ruled that restricting inheritance of a status to children of women reinstated by Bill C-31 is in fact unconstitutional. <laughs>